This topic has paralyzed me for years using Fill Flash with action and sports photos. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do it and how to keep things simple so you can do it too. Now, you might not think you need a flash on a super sunny day. I didn't think I did either until I worked with some professional photographers who shot skateboarding events and they taught me a thing or two about using Fill Flash. This technique works for any flash camera combination, but you need to be able to set up high speed sync on your camera and your flash because we're talking bright sunny days here, right? So you definitely have a fast shutter speed. So you need high speed sync on your flash and camera. I'm gonna show you how to set that up too. Now I know I have a lot of G100 fans on this channel as well. And I just wanna say that the G100 has a built-in flash and it can take an external flash. However, the flash synchronization speed is limited to 1 50th of a second. So not very useful for outdoor flash photography unless it's really dark. Now, one of the drawbacks with using fill flash with fast moving action photography is really you only get one shot. The flash doesn't recharge fast enough for you to get your usual 12 frames per second burst. So you can't use burst. So because of that, you have to get your timing right. Timing is critical. Now, one thing I've noticed, and I've talked to other photographers about this, is that there is a slight delay between when you press the shutter button and when the picture gets taken. That delay needs to be learned. You need to figure out when your subject is moving, when to press the shutter button to anticipate that peak moment of action. And that's not an easy thing to do. So you're going to have to learn new timing and that's critical to getting your photos looking their best. And it does take practice. And on this channel, you know what I say, just practice, just get out there and take pictures. And sometimes you have to take a couple thousand pictures before you master a certain skill. And that's what you're gonna have to do with Fill Flash. Okay, here's the setup I use with my G9 using the Godox V862. And this is for Olympus or Panasonic cameras. Put your flash on TTL and TTL is through the lens. So basically that means it has automatic exposure. Make sure that you understand how to add or remove light. It's like the exposure compensation button. It works in one third f-stop increments. So you'll notice that it goes down 0 0.3, 0 0.7, and one. So there's three clicks in between each full stop of light. So remember one f-stop of light either adds or removes half or double. So if you have a plus one, you double the amount of light coming out of your flash. If you minus one, it cuts that light in half. Now I found that in some cases, depending on how close I was to my subject, leaving it at zero was fine. But if I was really close, you don't wanna overpower your subject with too much flash or it doesn't look natural. When you're shooting outdoors in bright sun and you're trying to freeze the action, you probably need a faster shutter speed than the usual sync speed of the camera, which in the case of the G9 is 1 250th of a second. So in that case, you push this button here and you can see that high speed sync shows up. So that's high speed synchronization, and that allows you to use faster shutter speeds than 1 250th of a second. Go into your flash menu on the camera, go to flash mode, and just choose the full on flash mode. There's like a red eye mode and a no flash mode in this case, and I'm just putting it on full on flash. There is something called flash synchro and you can choose first or second curtain sync. So it's either at the beginning of your exposure or the end of your exposure. I like to set it up for first curtain sync. I didn't really notice any difference in timing, but I would like to think that first curtain sync, I'd be a bit more accurate. Cause like I mentioned, your timing is super important when using fill flash. Uh, flash adjustment, you can adjust that on the flash itself or you can adjust it in the camera. I prefer to adjust it on the flash so that I can see what's going on and you know have a, have a direct connection. Choose your ISO. I'm shooting in manual mode here, so manual exposure. So I'm choosing ISO, shutter speed, f-stop, all manually. So for a bright sunny day, I'm gonna choose ISO 200. 
Now for me, when I'm shooting sports, um, I like to shoot at at least one one thousandth of a second. So I'm going to set my shutter speed to one one thousandth of a second. And I'll just start with f5.6, somewhere down in that range. Just a tip, if you don't know where to start with your exposure, just take a photo at the shutter speed you're going to use, at the ISO you're going to use, and then see what f-stop works to give you a good overall exposure. And you can actually have your subject in the frame as well if you want to uh, start with that. Here's a selection of photos taken with and without fill flash. I've included the camera settings because I know you guys like that stuff. It's fairly easy to get your timing right when you're shooting with a high burst rate, but when you're shooting one picture at a time, it does take a bit more practice. You can see that in some cases my timing was a bit off, but with more experience, you'll know exactly when to press the shutter so you capture the peak action. So as you can probably see from these photos, using a flash helps to fill in the shadows and also adds a nice catch light to your subject's eyes. Don't be afraid to experiment. You're going to uh, definitely need to test. Like I said, you might need a thousand pictures to nail this. It takes practice but you're eventually going to learn what a good starting point is. You're going to look around and say, oh yeah, it's really bright. It's a midday shot. It's the only time I could get out. So these are my settings. You could even take little crib notes, put them on a recipe card, shove it in your camera bag, whatever you need to do. If this video has helped you get over the fear of fill flash, please consider buying me a coffee. Thanks to all of you who bought me coffee so far. I'm saving up for the Leica Lumix 9mm f1.7 lens. Can't wait. For more info about this Godox flash and how to use it with this trigger, you can check out this video here.